Hi, hello, and what's up, and welcome to your online lecture series with me again, Sir Benzos, your instructor. So today, ang pag-uusapan natin is all about yung rule 10 natin, is the spot check, the costing, and pat-down searches. So let's start with the spot check and the costing. So kasi pag nakikita natin itong word the spot check or the costing, but although that we have the 1987 Constitution but protecting us from legal search and illegal arrests, uh, may tinatawag din naman tayong warrantless and pwede siya pumasok dito under spot checks, accostings and pattern searches natin. Okay? So dito sa spot checks and accosting, ang kailangan mo lang isipin on this is uh, a, law enforcer, a law enforcer will approach you. Diba? Given naman yung identity nila, ibibigyan nila dapat talaga yung identity nila. And uh, mayroon silang uh, reasonable suspicion na na magtanong or mag-inquire in regards kung anong ginagawa mo within the scene. Okay? So, both the spot checks and costing and pat-down searches, ito yung pinaka-importante sa kanila. Okay? Reasonable suspicion exists. Kailangan may, may uh, they could provide justification for the reason kung bakit kanila dapat mag-i-accost at kung bakit nila kailangan mag-adapt ng pat-down searches. Okay, so, hindi pa pwede na kutub lang ang papairalin na ni law enforcer in regards with spot checks and pat-down searches. Okay? Meron mga justification kung bakit niya yun binawa. Diba? Hindi pwedeng mere hunch or mere kutub na tinatawag natin kung bakit sila mga harap. Okay? So, we are protected. Again, we are protected by the Constitution from illegal search and arrest. But then again, we do have warrantless in such a way na pwedeng pumasok ang spot checks and pat-down searches kung may reasonable ground si law enforcer to conduct an inquiry or to conduct searches. Okay? Basta kailangan it is justifiable kung bakit nila yung e prepare form. Okay? So, let's talk about ano ba yung grounds? Ano ba yung, dap ano ba yung pwede para makapag-spot check? and accosting. So again, ang definition ng spot checks natin is i-approach ka ni law enforcer for an inquiry. Okay? May tatanong sa'yo. Okay? On the number one, yung appearance or the minor of the individual suggests that he is part of a criminal enterprise or is in engaged in a criminal act. Sige, bibigyan ko na lang kayo dito ng example. So may kita naman natin dito yung appearance or the minor. Okay? So, let's say na that the person has a tattoo, okay? I'm not against with people with tattoo kasi it's a form of expression kasi hindi yun mag, uh, hindi justifiable na basis ang tattoo, diba? For, for you to conduct spot checks or searches. Maliban na lang kung uh, sinasabi natin dito that the, the tattoo represents or symbol ng you are a member sa isang gantong group or isang kailang organized crime group, pwede. Diba? Na, magagamit natin yung appearance ng tattoo na yun. Pero if the tattoo itself lang, diba, forming an expression, hindi pa pwede yun. It's not justifiable. Okay? So, ano pa ba? Kuwari makita lang si law enforcer ng payat, diba? Bigyan natin siya ng mga tao doon. Like, yung appearance na na that the person is under the influence of illegal drugs. Hindi po pwede na mukha kasi siyang ganto, mukha siyang ganyan, kaya mo siya uh, nag-spot check ka sa kanya, nag cost ka. So, hindi rin po pwede yun. Okay? From engagement naman ng criminal act, ganto naman yan. So, a person could, a law enforcer rather, could approach a person kung nakita naman ni law enforcer na, na it's something na kitang-kita Diba, within its plain view, okay? within its senses, maita yung damit ni, ni person, diba? may presumption of innocence pa rin tayo, hindi natin siya pwede tawagin kagad na, na criminal. So, may nakita kunwari siya na, na blood stain sa damit. So, medyo madami. So, it's a ground. Pwede siyang ground for spot checks and accosting. Lalo na kung medyo marami yung blood stains sa shirt. Okay? Pwede uh, ilapitan and in-inquire. Okay? Kasi possible, there is a great probability or possibility na na-engage sa isang criminal act. So, ganun din, the actions of the individuals sa number 2 natin, 
a person may also be uh, subjected for a costing. Kung makita natin na sabi natin there's a weapon held by a person, then yung yung knife na gamit niya, meron sabihin natin ng mga blood, di ba? May mga dugo na kasama. Pero syempre, it is subjected for a costing pa rin kasi hindi natin alam baka uh, may uh, he's a butcher, di ba? Nagtatadda talaga siya mga ganyan. Pero if it is a great ground talaga, di ba? May kita naman natin, di ba? May presumption of innocence kasi subjected pa rin siya to a costing and inquiry kung bakit nga ba may dala siyang weapon. At the same time, the weapon itself has uh, blood stains or kaya fresh blood pa yun nandyan, di ba? Number three, Uh, pwede ka rin i-accost or approach na isang law enforcer kung ikaw ay may kita sa isang uh, suspicious na face, di ba? Para may tinataguan. Like, uh, yung mga, sabi natin mga dark alleys, mga ganyan, mga kanto-kanto, na dyan nagtatago, mga ganyan. So, a law enforcer might try to accost you to inquire if what are your intentions, kung ba't nandun ko sa may dark alley, kung bakit parang may may binabantayan ka, or what are suspicious yung mga ginagalaw mo, o kaya may concerned citizen na nakakita na uh, yung, na may ginagawa si certain person na may parang hinahanap o parang suspicious, ganun. So, pwedeng uh, maging ground siya for accosting natin. Okay? On number, ano naman tayo? On number five, eto yung mga uh, sabi natin si suspect may mga nagbabulge sa sa kanya mga sa kanyang damit. Okay, sinasabi natin, di ba? Suspect clothing bulges in a manner na may may dala-dalang weapon. Okay, ano naman ang mga instances dito? So si law enforcer, once na nakita ka, sabi na natin during his patrol, ba may nakita siya suspicious na yung yung position niya. At the same time, nakikita may something na nagbabulge. Diba? May presumption of innocence pa rin dito po. So, ilalapitan niya. Diba? It's preventative naman. And would inquire kung ano yung nandun sa nagbabulge sa damit niya. Okay? And if mukha naman talaga siyang weapon, diba? the law enforcer may suggest to show it. Parang i-direct, consented na ipakita kung ano ba yung nagbabulge na yun. Okay? So, pwede siya. It's a ground also. Now, Number 6 naman, sabihin na natin there is a crime that has been committed. Nakikita natin na may isang tao na malapit dun sa pinangyarihan ng crime scene. Then yung suspect na yon eh sabihin na natin na uh, he is really uneasy on this on this situation. Napakalapit niya. Kumaga pwede siya maging one of the prime. Diba, mga prime suspect. So pwede rin siya Uh, grounds for costing natin. Okay? So, sa number 7, ito naman siya. Kung si law enforcer is uh, having seen the person with the criminal record involved to another criminal activity. Okay, sige, kaklaruhin natin yan dito. So, if si ikaw, law enforcer, diba, during your patrol, may nakita kita mo yung with having the knowledge, nakita mo yung, yung dating na, nakulong. Diba? sabi natin, napasok sa lock-up jails natin. Hindi siya pa pwede. Hindi siya pa pwede maging ground for a costing. Ha? Kaya nasabihin natin na nakalaya na siya. Una-una kasi napag-servan niya na yun eh. Okay? And it would be contradicting dun sa institutional labeling natin. Diba? Napagbayaran niya na yun eh. Okay? So, hindi natin pwedeng itag a, per- itag a person na sabihin na natin na serve niya na na-serve niya na, okay, napatunayan niya na inusente na siya, then you would label the person na, na criminal pa din. So, it's a no-no, hindi siya grounds. Hence, pa pwede naman maging grounds yan if, kuwari, sabihin na natin that the person is involved in a crime. Kilala mo siya, you have the knowledge. And then, may proximity or, or sabihin natin, within, the, with, within that area, nakita mo ulit siya, then a crime just, ha- just had happened, pa pwede pwede yun, natin magamit. Okay? Ngayon, the subject for questioning, inquiry lang naman siya. So, it, it is still uh, protected by the constitutional itself. So, it's a costing pa rin naman. Approach the inquiry. Okay? Next is, ganun din, uh, pwede magkaroon ng spot checks and costing kung si individual, kuwari, may nangyaring krimen, din biglang tumakas, 
Well, it's quite suspicious kung, big, kung ba't bigla siyang tatakas, di ba? So, may nangyari, tinakita ni law enforcer, tumakbo. Ngayon, si law enforcer may haste o uh, pwedeng habulin yung yung tumakbo for questioning. Kasi, parang suspicious, ba't ka nga naman tatakbo, di ba? Well, hindi pa rin man siya grounds for arrest and and so on and so forth. Pero, uh, the person is bounded to be accosted. Well, pwede ma-approach, may matanungan. Kung bakit nga ba ganun, tumakbo siya ganun. Okay? So, that's the grounds for spot check and searches. Next, ano naman ang pwede? O ano naman ang ground sir, sa pat-down searches? Kasi, ang pat-down searches, may pagkakap-kap na nangyari. Okay? That's pat-down searches. Ngayon, number one, ang kailangan dito, a crime is believed that a crime of violence where the threat of use or use of dead of or use of deadly weapon is involved. Anong gusto sabihin sa atin dito? So sabihin na natin na ang nakita within the proximity or within the crime scene is may person din may nagbabudge, 'di ba? Hindi siya hunch, hindi siya kutob. And etong pinaka-importante within the plain view ni law enforcer na may, may weapon na nakikita. Diba? Bulging in or externally may nakikita siya. Okay? So, pwede magkaroon ng pat-down searches. Okay? Then again, there is consent pa rin naman na a search will be made kasi kailangan i-inform pa rin. Diba? I-inform ni law enforcer kung bakit siya magkakandak ng pat-down searches. Okay? Sunod, if a police officer handles several suspect. So, ganito lang din siya. Uh, pag ang police officer po natin is uh, on patrol, di ba? May mga several suspect within the proximity. So, yung within those, within that area na nang, nangyari yung crime scene, may mga several suspect, ba bago magkaroon ng sinasabi natin na na, na proper arrest natin, kailangan magkakaroon muna ng searches, di ba? Yung pat-down searches natin. Okay. So, ano pa ba? This one, yung appearance yung sinasabi natin ulit. I would not go through all of this. Pero again, ganito pa rin yung sinasabi ko sa inyo. It's the number 5, the appearance and demeanor of the suspect. Ngayon, sinasabi ko sa inyo yung grounds for this one. Hindi lang siya pwede sa napakababaw na dahilan na dahil ganito yung itsura. Baga parang mere suspicion, hindi pa pwede po talaga. Ang kailangan natin dito is strong by a great ground of belief that a person is or it might be a suspect di ba, para sa uh, crime na nangyari. Okay? So then again, umiikot ng pat-down searches. Pwede mag-pat-down searches itong tatandaan. It is within the plain view lang. Plain view ni Nino. Ni law enforcer. Okay? Within its plain view lang. Kung ano lang nakikita niya ba nakikita, nagdidikita ng balat, naamoy, at iba pa, di ba? Within its senses, sinasabi natin. Okay? So, number 7, it is the most important one. Okay? Ito yung tatandaan, ha? lalo na sa mga pat-down searches. Because pat-down searches are, ay na rin, may gender sensitivity na rin. Kung lalaki ang ipapat-down, lalaki. Kung babae, babae lang din. Okay? Hindi pa pwede ang lalaki mag, ano, magpapat-down sa babae. Okay? May gender sensitivity na rin tayo in regards with pat-down searches. Okay? Ngayon, ano naman ang procedure ng spot checks and accosting natin? Okay, first, it is an approach nga. Sabi ko, may inquiry. Kailangan na kailangan that the law enforcer should identify himself as a law enforcer. Okay? Should identify. By what means? Kailangan mapakita yung badge, mapakita yung ID na siya ay PNP. Hindi the mere fact na may suot lang siya na, na sabihin natin na law enforcement uniform, PNP uniform. Hindi yun sapat. Marami lang nabibiling ganyan, mga law authorized. Diba? Hindi rin po pwede po na baril lang ang ipapakita. Then, he could tag himself as a law enforcer. Hindi kailan naging identity ang firearm as a law enforcer. Okay? So, the, the greatest means to identify that he or she 
is a law enforcer is through his badge tsaka yung identity cards natin. Okay? Kailangan mapakilala ng maigi kung sino ba sila. Okay? So, kung ako, civilian, then may mag-approach sa akin ng civilian, diba, showing his firearm and whatsoever, iyako sa kundi ako papayag. Why would I let someone inquire? Diba, magtatanong in regard sa akin kung hindi naman siya law enforcer, hindi naman siya authorized person to conduct yung mga ganyan. Diba, I am bounded, I am protected by the Constitution against illegal search and arrests. Diba? So, ganun lang din yun. So, kailangan si, si law enforcer, ito yung pinaka-importante sa lata. Hindi ito bawal. It is part of the operation. They should identify themselves through their badge and through their identity cards. Okay? Next, ano pang procedure? Kailangan si police officer should remain courteous at all times. Okay? As it is reciprocity lang din naman that the community that the civilian needs the law enforcer, the law enforcer likewise needs the civilians, di ba? Kung bagay, ibig sabihin may relationship yan. But all times, hindi pwede magmumukhang mas angat yung isa dun sa isa. Okay? Hindi pa pwede. So, yung courtesy, kailangan, it should be maintained, it should be observed. Lalo na kung cooperative naman. But then again, for our law enforcer, they should remain vigilant at all cost. Okay? Kasi hindi rin nila alam if that person would be... Yun nga, hindi nga kasi natin alam kung sino ang kalaban, sino hindi. Diba? Mahirap yan. Hindi naman yan laro lang na uh, may, may terrorist, counter-terrorist. Hindi yan ganyan. Okay? It's really hard to identify who is the enemy within within the area. Okay? Pero at all times, si uh, law enforcer should remain courteous. Lalo na in hosting. Okay? Hindi pwede yung he would appear as hostile, yung parang pagalit-galit. Hindi, hindi pa pwede. Okay? So, there. Ano pa ba? Ang procedures natin ng spot checks. Ngayon, bago mag-approach, diba, si tinatawag natin, si law enforcer natin, lalo na kung medyo crucial yung lalapitan niya, y- Diba? Pero great voice of discretion pa rin ang gagamitin. Hindi natin na medyo delikado kasi talaga it would endanger the law enforcer's life. He could then call for backup. Okay? He could call for backup. Lalo na kung may malaki naman siya ma- ma- may great justification siya for a posting then medyo crucial. Pwede siya mag-call for backup. At the same time, kailangan to si law enforcer must delay yung pag-alis nila. Kasi at such cases baka makatakbo kaya Uh, hindi naman po pwede na magkaroon ng armed confrontation. It's still prohibited yung armed confrontation natin. Diba? So, as soon as hindi pa nadating yung backup, kailangan makapag-build muna si law enforcement ng report, uh, asking questions, kung gaano, pero at the same time, alagaan yung sarili niya, ni law enforcer. Okay? Next, procedure ulit sa spot checks natin. Kailangan si law, enfor- si law enforcer yung mga questions niya, kailangan ay necessary information dun sa suspect natin. Okay? Kailangan ma-inform both sides kung ano nga ba ang reason behind or justification behind the spot checks and accosting natin. Si law enforcer, kailangan magpakilala na, ng identification niya as well as si civilian, kailangan mag-justify din siya ng pagkakakilala niya At the same time, justification, kung ba't nga ba siya nandun sa lugar na yon and anything na na-discuss natin under the grounds. Okay? So, yan yung isa. Next and lastly, ito. Ang police officer naman, hindi kailangan, ah, baka sabihin ninyo, uh, in-accost ka, in-approach ka, kailangan sabihan ka na ng Miranda Warning at anti-torture law. Diba? Yung Miranda Warning natin, yung, yung i- alam naman na natin yan, you would be given yung rights mo under the constitution, di ba? Hindi siya kailangan dito sa accosting. Okay? Maliban na lang kung nagkaroon ka ng, ng justification or ground for arrest. Okay? Kung hindi naman hahantong yung accosting to arrest, yung pag-inform to other person's constitutional right, hindi, hindi na yun kailangan, uh, uh, hindi na siya kailangan isight 
Okay, itong Miranda warning natin. Kung it's a mere inquiry lang naman. Okay, di ba? Baka isipin nyo, nag-inquire sa inyo, nag-approach, nag-inquire sa inyo yung law enforcer, nag-aantay kayo ng Miranda warning. Bitin ko sa inyo, yung Miranda warning, ginagamit lang sa for arrests. Okay, kung hindi naman kaya arrest, ta ta nag inquire lang si law enforcer, that's fine. Hindi na kailangan siya isign. Okay? Next, dito naman tayo sa body of risk, pat down and searches. Ngayon, in pat down searches, tinatawag ka, gender sensitivity, kung babae, babae, lalaki sa lalaki, ang pag body of risk or pat down searches. Ngayon dito, sa pat down searches natin, kailangan dalawang police officer ang magperform ng search. Okay? Yung isa, nagkakandakt ng pat down, yung isa naman is protecting cover. Okay? Diba? Sa kung ano, kaya pwedeng maging, uh, sabi natin, taga-abot o kaya pag kami nakukuha si uh, law enforcer na mga, sabi natin, contrabands, ganun, na iaabot sa kanya. At syempre, kailangan mapakita din doon sa person yung mga nakuha. Okay? Form pa din. So, the other one for protection, yung isa yung nagkakapkap. Okay? Next, sa uh, procedures natin ng body frisk and pat-down searches. Ngayon, dito, ang pat-down searches natin, mostly, it should be done ng nakatayo. Okay? Nakatayo siya. So, the suspect would be put on a stationary position or stationary object, rather, in which na yun yung pader na sinasabi natin. ba? Diba? Si suspect, tatayo sa may pader, ilalagay yung kamay niya. Then, pagbubukor rin yung kanya mga paa. Then, saka magkakaroon ng pat-down. Okay? Ulitin ko ha, within the plain view lang pa rin ang kailangan dito. Kung ano yung makakapkap na skin ni law enforcer. Okay, kung sabihin na naman natin, uh, uncooperative yung suspect na kinukuha natin. Kaya, pinapat down natin. Ngayon, si law enforcer may subject the person for proning, prone position ng pagbabody frisk. Okay? So, pwede siya ganun. Kasi, uh, in prone position, pag nagbabody frisk, mas kontrolado ni ni law enforcer yung pagkuha, kaya pag, pag frisk sa ating suspect. ba? Pero, ano lang naman siya, ginagamit lang itong mga prone position, lalo na pagka medyo hostile yung suspect natin or uncooperative. Okay? So, next one. Dito sa pat-down searches natin, nilatawag ko nga sa inyo ulit, sinasabi ko ulit sa inyo, na it should be within the plain view lang. Okay? Kung ano lang ang mararamdaman sa outer clothing ni suspect. Okay? Ngayon, if such prohibited items ang makukuha natin, katulad ng mga weapons, tulad ng gun, knife, club, or anything na pwede magamit sa pag-commit ng crime, it shall be then confiscated. Okay? That's the thing. Next. Ngayon, kung ang suspect naman natin may dala, sabi natin hardball, suitcase, briefcase, sack, or ano pang mga gamit na nakakapagdala, kaya po, container, di ba, na pwede mag-conceal ng weapon, ngayon si police officer, ito yung rula, si law enforcer, hindi po pwede hindi po pwedeng pakialaman yung item. Okay? But then, kailangan ilagay yung gamit malayo dun sa suspect. If the suspect din naman, katulad dito sa mga pat-down search natin and during the accosting na rin, ni-request consentedly kung pa pwede bang ipakita yung loob. Okay. Diba? So, pagbukas may nakita. Now, that could also be or justified yun at the same time, it's consented search. Okay? Consented search ang nangyari. Pasabihin na natin na pwede po bang pabukas ng suitcase ninyo? Then sabi mo, sure, sure, sure. Pagbukas, may nakita. Yun. It justifiable yun. Kasi, na-inform na naman eh, di ba? Consented naman yung search na nangyari eh. And within the plain view, within yung pagkita ni, ni law enforcement, nandun nga. So, yun, it could be used. Di ba? At the same time, it is consented. Walang problema. Pero if ayaw, edi, hindi pa pwede. Diba? Nag-consent, hindi pumayag, hindi pwedeng pakialaman ni law enforcer. Okay? Last one. In body frisk and pat-down searches, ngayon, 
Pausapan lang naman dito sa external padding ng clothing. Okay? So, other than that, diba, katulad ng sinasabi natin, kung wala namang nakahanap ulit ng mga weapons, ng mga ganyan, and any violations of the law, walang arrest na mangyayari. Okay? Hindi po pwede. Kasi wala, kung wala namang crime na nakumit, eh, hindi po pwede. Okay? In this one, if a weapon is found in the possession of which amounts a violation of the law, ay ang police officer pwedeng mag-arrest. Pero, kung sabihin ko nga sa inyo, kailangan muna, ba? Diba? Kailangan valid muna yung warrantless search para maging valid din yung arrest na mangyayari. Okay? Not the other way around. Okay? Kailangan valid ang search sa magkakaroon ng arrest. Okay? So, then again, that's the procedures, the grounds in the body of risk, pat-down searches, and the costing. And I really do hope you have learned some in this online lecture series. And again, we'll see you again in the next meeting. And have a good one sa lahat.